So, your uncle. What's wrong with him? He's possessed. As in the devil? Something like that. He says a dark man is following him. Watching him at all times. What do you make of it? It's nonsense, of course. But I'd be lying if I said it didn't bother me. You see, it runs in my family. Possession? No, detective. Deteriorating melancholy. Practically every member of the Hartwood family is driven mad before they grow old. But Jeremy didn't kill himself. Is that why he's at your setup? Despite being convinced that he is truly possessed, he decided to put his last chips on Dr. Gray and his psychoanalysis, figuring he might stumble upon some cure. You mentioned the letter. I received a disturbing letter from Jeremy accusing the staff and all the other patients of being involved in some cult. And now they are also out to keep him. Could it be real? Or is it all just in his head? It's a story he tells himself, Mr. Carnby. Anything to avoid the truth. Which is? That we're all terribly insignificant. That people mean so very little to one another. That there is no one out to get Jeremy Hartwood because he isn't worth getting. Here we are. My uncle's not well, Mr. Carnby. I want to make sure he's all right. Then what's my part in this? You couldn't get a cab? I just wouldn't feel safe going alone. Did you bring a gun? Yeah. You think it'll actually come to that? No. But you might need to wave it around depending on how agreeable the staff will be. What exactly are we gonna do when we find Jeremy? I don't know. Let's just find him first. Hello? It's so quiet. Where is everyone? This is a big place. Maybe they're on the other side of the house. Stay here. I'll have a look. Wait, don't! No. Excuse me? Do you know where I can find Jeremy Hartwood? Of course not. McCarthy, what are you doing? I told you not to lose sight of the girl. Don't you worry, Mags. I'll find that little rascal. Who are you people? What are you doing here? I'm sorry about all this, but I'm looking for my uncle. His name is Jeremy Hartwood. What are you doing, child? You shouldn't be alone. Go find McCarthy. Who are you? Are you here for the Fay Dodo? Go upstairs now. My name is Emily Hartwood. I, I, I'm the niece of Jeremy Hartwood. This is Detective Carnby. The police? Why are you here? No, I'm a private investigator. Sorry to bother you. My client's worried about her uncle. He's a patient here at Dresetto. If you don't mind, could you direct us where to find him? No, I can't. Jeremy has gone missing. If you leave your information, I will make sure to contact you. Wait, he ran away? No, he won't leave the house. He's around here somewhere, and both of our orderlies are looking for him. That's unacceptable. Where's Dr. Gray? I want to speak with him immediately. Fine. I'll ask him. Wait here and don't touch anything. Do you want to see Jeremy's room? Can you show us? Follow me.
Thank you. Strange kid. Mm. Let's look around, see what we can find. Every night the dark man stands opaque at the threshold of my room, counting the days until my spirit spills out of my tired shape. Have you ever seen anything like this? Looks like a talisman. You mean like this one? Can you find me a knife to cut the canvas? I want to take this with me. You want to take the painting? Sure, I'll find one. I found this tube as well. Should keep it safe for you. Do you want to carry it or should I? Miss Hartwood. Emily? I'll take it. Thank you. We're done here, right? I'm not sure. I don't know how to do any of this. Listen, I think we should talk to Dr. Gray. He must know something about what's going on around here. Okay. Let's do that. Come on, I don't want to be here all night. Detective Carnby? W where did... Dorsetto, looking for my uncle Jeremy? Jeremy's your uncle. I didn't know. Why would you? You're still working at Dorsetto? Yeah, both me and Lada stuck around. We're real orderless now. Y you remember my sister Lada, don't you? What happened, Batiste? How are we here? You know about the dark man haunting your uncle? I'm familiar with his mental state. I think we all in his head somehow. Because these streets are real, but they're not like on any map. Nah, this is like when you remember something, but in the wrong way. Do you know how to get back to Dorsetto? I'm not safe here. True words have yet been spoken, Mrs. Marcus. Don't call me that. It's Miss Emily Hartwood. There's no reason to call me anything else. I'm sorry, Miss Emily. I'm just trying to tell you like it is. This place ain't safe for no one. 
There's evil hiding in the dark. How do I get back? Only Jeremy knows how. He has this juju necklace guiding him. You mean this talisman? Mm-hmm. Just like it. He says it's been protecting him. Ever since he got it from Miss Jackson down the street. You know where it came from? Have you been there? I was there no more than one hour ago looking for Jeremy. Locked it up to keep the ghouls from getting inside. You can have the key if you want. Thank you. I'll take a look. Stay safe, miss. This must be Miss Jackson's place. Let's see if we can find out more about Jeremy's talisman. It looks exactly like Jeremy's talisman. I think it's meant to hold the talisman. I'm not sure what numbers I should use. Maybe there's something in Jeremy's notes. What's that picture in the glass? Where is that? Good to see you again, Miss Hartwood. Mrs. Thompson told me you were here. She also alerted me that you brought a detective with you. I'm very curious to hear what this is all about. You don't remember me, do you, Miss Hartwood? We met at your family's house in the Garden District, when your uncle was about to be admitted under my care. No, I remember. Sorry. I'm not really feeling well. Oh, well, in that case, have a seat. Let me make you a drink. I don't seem to have made much of an impression on you. On the other hand, I can vividly recall you and your parents. Because of our cheerful disposition, I'm sure. You are far too intelligent to think that. You come from a joyless family, Miss Hartwood. The only amusement I took from my visit was discovering that the young lady's drink was an old-fashioned. Very astute. Is that supposed to make you seem attentive or intelligent? Whatever you prefer. Are you ready to tell me why you are here, Miss Hartwood? And why you brought a detective? I received a letter from my uncle. He seemed certain that he was in danger here. If I find out you're treating him badly, I'll be taking him back with me to New Orleans. Really? Is he going to live with you in your tiny garçonniere? That would be a spectacular way to ratify your spinsterhood. Because you are well aware that your father would never let him back in his house. No, I have it. Maybe you can bring him back up north. You've been wanting to move back for quite a few years, haven't you? You always preferred your mother's side of the family. Jeremy is free to leave with you. I won't object. However, there is one problem, as you might have learned. He is, in fact, missing. Do you know where he could have gone? No, I'm afraid I don't. I have my staff looking for him. I'm sure he will show up eventually. Especially if he learns that you are here. He is quite fond of you. What can you tell me about his condition? I never heard a proper diagnosis. What is your medical opinion of him? Well, let me think. He is an anxious man. Depressed, even. He suffers from a perceived lack of order in his inner and outer life. He constantly complains about events not presenting themselves according to their divine nature. In the Dark Man? Hard to tell if it was ever anything specific. Jeremy uses the Dark Man as a psychological scapegoat to avoid facing the truth that he is in any way at fault. You don't think there can be any truth to the Dark Man's... supernatural existence? Why would you ask that? I... Can we ever be sure? If the Dark Man is some sort of evil presence that is in possession of Jeremy? Well... I assure you, any evidence that you experience supporting that claim is purely delusional. Don't get caught up in mass hysteria, Miss Hartwood. You wouldn't want to take your uncle's place in this hospital, would you? Uh, I'll be leaving now, Doctor. I need to keep looking for my uncle. 
do so, Miss Hartwood. I'll let you know if he shows up. Carnby. God, I'm I'm glad to see you. I was afraid you had left. Me? You're the one who just disappeared. It's hard to explain. I think I blacked out. I, it was like I went somewhere else. It's okay, miss. You're clearly upset. No, it's... I don't know what's happening. I, this is a very stressful situation for you, I understand. Ugh, no, you don't understand. Just take a deep breath. Why don't you sit down, smoke some of the Perique. If you want, I could even drive you back to New Orleans. I just want to have a talk with Dr. Gray first. I want to stay. I found a talisman just like the one in the painting. I think I might be able to figure out where Tarawea is, where Jeremy wanted to go. That's great. Just stay out of trouble, okay? Let me handle the investigation. I'm not crazy, Detective. Not yet. <laughs> Catch you later. If a talisman like this can open up doors between the French Quarter and Dorsetto, then maybe Jeremy is hiding in some strange other world. Like Tarawea, the place he mentioned in the book. No matter where he is, it's clear that my search won't be limited to Dorsetto. Good evening, Miss Hartwood. That is your name, isn't it? I would be terribly embarrassed if it wasn't. You're right. Emily Hartwood, Jeremy's niece. Nice to meet you. Ruth. Ruth Talon. you're smoking? <laughs> How terribly quaint. Maybe so, but I like it. Would you care to share some? That smell is making me feel very nostalgic. Is it all that you hope for? I enjoy your light mockery, Miss Hartwood. I can tell we would make great friends. How flattering. Too bad you're locked up in this place. <laughs> your insincerity is really refreshing. I wish you were mad as I am, then you could stay. Give it a few years and I might just be. Lunacy is one of my family's few privileges. Oh, good. I'll be looking forward to it. You don't know anything about what happened to Jeremy, do you? Everyone here is really strange, and it's hard to know what to make of anything you hear. Occasionally, it sounds quite exciting, though. Good versus evil and all that. I'm sorry, but... I don't think I have anything useful to share. It doesn't matter. Thank you for the much-needed break. Bon voyage.
Everything's back to normal. What are you doing sneaking around? You almost scared me to death. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to disturb your ritual. I wouldn't have guessed voodoo was in practice at a place like this. The doctor may be all about science, but I know these roots have power. Do you know what's going on here? I have a feeling Dorsetta was cursed. There are several players with stakes in this game. Dorsetto isn't cursed or blessed. It's a battleground. And it would all be a lot better if you could get your uncle out sooner than later. That's all I'm trying to do. I wish you the best of luck, Miss Harwood. I really mean that. Now, if you'll excuse me, I need to look after my gombo. What a strange but beautiful room. I did it! I crossed the thresholds to my intended destination without a focusing device. My talisman now knows these roads, and I have no need for the plates. I can find my way to Lafayette as easy as I find my own room. I visited the grave of my father and seen the oven waiting for me. Thank you for opening these doors. I now must summon my courage and go back to that hateful mound outside the oil rig. I hope you'll be feeling better when I return, Jeremy. <gasps> I did it. I opened up another dream. Mount Jeremy mentioned in his book.
Jeremy, <laughs> you dropped your... <gasps> Mrs. Marcus? Get off of me! What are you doing here? Trying to find my uncle. Jeremy is your uncle? Could you please? Thank you. And it's Miss Hartwood. You don't remember me? I remember you, Mr. Bois. I met your brother Batiste earlier. I suppose he hadn't found Jeremy either then. We spread out to find him. Can I have this? I'm trying to get to Tarawea. Fine, believe the rest. I just want Jeremy to come looking. We have to leave before it comes inside. What? Where? Come quick. Come on, Grace. I'm too tired for games. I'll even let's play with my jackknife. Oh, good evening. <laughs> you haven't seen a little girl by any chance, have you? I don't think so. Uh, you would have known if you did. The only kid crazy enough to be in this place. She's not in her room, then? <laughs> that would be a first. Always running around causing trouble. She's very hard to pin down, that one. You want to see up? I'm good, thank you. Well, I should be going then. <clears throat> Unless there's anything you need from me. I just want to find my uncle before anything happens to him. Oh, don't worry, miss. He'll show up. <laughs> he is much too lily-livered to kill himself. Why would he? <laughs> it's his greatest ambition, didn't you know? Take care now. Piano as well? Huh? You're a governess. Did you teach those clawing Casano kids how to play the piano? How do you know about that? Just because grown ups don't notice children doesn't mean we don't notice you. Yes. I taught them some piano. Are you any good at it? Not good enough to play a broken one. It fell from the attic, brought half the ceiling down. It was Jeremy's fault, wasn't it? Nobody knows what happened, but you're not wrong. Ah! What are you doing? <clears throat> Showing another room. Something is open. It worked. I'm in another one of Jeremy's dreams.
Emily, is that you? Jeremy. What are you doing here? Well, you sounded so miserable in your letter. I've come to take you away from here. I can't believe I made such a foolish mistake. All I wanted was for you to stay away. What do you mean? I bargained with the dark man. A pact to keep New Orleans safe with my own life as tribute. The Dark Man isn't real, Jeremy. There is nothing he can do to hurt you. How do you think any of this is happening? How do you still not trust my words? Fine. Then let me help. Don't be foolish. He will bury you next to me in his sunken temple for an eternity. I don't care. I'll find a way. I have my own talisman and I know about Tarawea. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Don't speak. Who's in here? Show yourself. You know who, Emily? He took your grandfather. No, I mean it. Who's in here? I can feel someone's in here. Emily! Why do you want to go there, Jeremy? I've seen so many strange occurrences lately. Memories explode into existence and then burn out like tide glass bulb filaments. Dreamscapes crash down from the stars and sink into the sea. Doors that lead to nowhere and absolutely everywhere at once. With all this reverie, I want to think there's a chance that you found a way to remain alive in some way I cannot fathom. Just like I've learned to navigate with my talisman, maybe you, with all your knowledge, you somehow knew a way. A way to find me again, perhaps in Tarawaya. Oh, my love. Jeremy. I need to find out more about Jeremy's pack with the Dark Man. He meant to go to Tarawea. Maybe there is something there that would help. Wait, what's going on? It's entering the numbers by itself? Okay, uh... Great, so where is that? Ah, here we go. You should not have come, Emily. How do you know my name? Have we met? In a manner of speaking. As a manifestation of Jeremy's deepest desires, I am to you unfamiliar. Yet I know of you. Are you Jeremy? Is that what you're saying? I am only his subconscious thoughts. I cannot speak for his totality. How come you have a Spanish accent? And what is this place? Is this Tarawea? This is indeed the fabled convent of Tarawea, where Jeremy goes to find peace during his sessions with Dr. Gray. It's all fantasy then. Based on the things he has read and seen. And that includes you? Yes. My name is Juan Luis Jorge. Jeremy once read a book of mine. It stuck with him. Can you help me break the pact with the Dark Man so we can leave Dorsetto? Jeremy doesn't want you to. He wants to honor his word to the Dark Man. Why? What's the point? I don't understand what the pact is for. The people of Derseto are calling upon evil to enter this world. Your uncle offered his soul to the Dark Man to contain this disaster. What? No, that doesn't make any sense. The pact will be fulfilled at dawn. As the sun rises, Jeremy will forever be entombed in his sunken desert temple. As promised, the Dark Man shall quarantine and starve the evil inside their settle. What about all the patients and the staff? They will not stand the chance. That's unacceptable. How could Jeremy agree to this? Desperation, of course. 
Yeremi did not choose martyrdom lightly. Well, nothing is lost yet. I'm sure I can find a way to break the pact and save Jeremy, and hopefully the people at Dorsetto. What even is this evil you're talking about? I don't know much. I think some nightmarish entity from the bayou. I'll just have to deal with that later. First, I have to get Jeremy out of his deal. What? Did you run out of arguments? You're actually quite inspiring, Miss Emily. If we put Jeremy's feelings aside, I would have to say I agree with you. Really? You might just be able to save the old man from himself. I think you should take a look in the convent library. Try to find the truth about Yermi's relationship with the Dark Man. Okay. You should know that you won't be alone in those grand halls. The Dark Man has been reading those books for years. He's... here? You'll have to be very careful. Of course. I... I can be careful. Good luck, Miss Emily. Oh. It was in the hot autumn that I went through the night with the restless crowds. He was a kind of itinerant showman who held forth in public halls and aroused widespread fear. The New Orleans address of the event is lost, but I remember distinctly the Prext Shipping Company pressing their contribution. Emily! My head, Juan. His breath replacing mine. You should not have come, Emily. Well, if it isn't my new best friend. Come, join me for some giggle water. Ah, uh, Ruth? Oh, Miss Hartwood, don't tell me you've been out swinging without me. Ruth, what is this place? Where are we? Have you never been to the Maccabean before? Goodness me. Tell me, Miss Hartwood, have you ever considered going out for an evening? Are we in New Orleans? Oh, who can tell anymore? I just went inside the Grand Parlor and suddenly here I am. The Grand Parlor? Can I get back to Dorsetto from here? <laughs> Are you sure you want to? We could stay here and drink the night away. How about a gin fizz? If this is New Orleans, maybe I should go further. Find that magic show the book was talking about. But there was no address, just Preg's shipping company. Oh, is this about where Jeremy met the dark man? How do you know about that? Hmm. 
Jeremy talked a lot about the dog man. I always felt a bit envious. How so? If an all-powerful entity showed me any interest, I'd at least hear him out. I'm sure he has plenty to offer. I don't think you'd want that, Ruth. You're too sweet for such darkness. <laughs> oh, please. What kind of blue nose do you take me for? I relish the darkness. I think it suits me. <laughs> You don't happen to know how to find the Prex Shipping Company, do you? Of course. Their office is just over there. Whoa, what happened? You just got lucky. <laughs> A biento, Mamselle Emily. Hey, do you know where my uncle is? No. But I bet you're close. Craig's Shipping Company. According to the book in the Great Library, they assisted a showman performing somewhere in New Orleans. It's somehow connected to Jeremy's introduction to the Dark Man. I'm sure I can find the address inside. All right. I made it inside the warehouse. Now let's find that address. Gotta go manifest on September 19th, 1892. Prague Shipping Company delivered four steamer trunks. This is it. The address to the theater where Jeremy first met the dark man. You shouldn't have come. Don't say that. You needed my help. All I wanted was to keep people away from Decetto. Especially you, Emily. You're the only one in the family who forgave me for choosing old age over death. Father still cares for you? He is paying for your treatment at Decetto. To get rid of me! That's the only reason anyone's at Decetto. Someone in the family thought you were becoming an embarrassment. Help me get you out of this mess, Jeremy. I want to take you away. Your father would send me right back. What if I take you up north, to Kingsport? I know Mother still has family up there. I've been thinking about going for a while now. I haven't been to Massachusetts in years. I still paint from memory, you know? That old lighthouse makes for a great motif. Your father and I would go almost every summer. Then when our great uncle died, we stopped going back. What is there to be done about the dark man? He's the one holding you back, right? You feel like you can't leave without paying your debt to him. The dark man has been with me since I was 12 years old. He was standing right on that stage right over there. For a brief moment, his gaze held mine, and that was it. I recognized him for what he was. The heart with guys embodied in flesh. I thought it was my turn, but I was only there to be mocked. Instead, his attention moved on to my father sitting next to me. I turned to him and saw his face. Whitest shade of pale I've ever seen. He bit off his tongue that night and suffocated. What can be done, Jeremy? Please. There's a way. Two ways to be exact. One worse than the other. A written contract now buried inside his sunken temple. Don't you remember what it said? I don't want to. Try, Jeremy. What did the contract say? No, we can't. We can't let New Orleans suffer that blight. I have to make this sacrifice. What are you talking about? Is this the thing from the bayou? 
Juan said something. <laughs> Okay, so there is a way to break the pact, at least. Hidden somewhere inside the Dark Man's temple. I just need to find it, somehow. Dubrin. Something to do with the dark man. Psychological trauma, break through the barriers of self-deceit, temper, manic behavior. Is this it? Is this the contract? Jeremy, how much pain and suffering you could have prevented. Emily, what are you doing? Detective, uh, how is your investigation going? Well, I still have no clue where Jeremy is, but I think I know why he's hiding. This place is full of lunatics planning to perform some kind of ritual tonight. Well, that sounds ridiculous. I rather would have just a day ago. It gets worse. I have reason to believe they killed anyone who didn't want to go along with the plan. Detective, have you encountered any monsters tonight? I just told you, I think they killed people. Beauregard, the author, Perosi, the singer, Mr. Waits, the clerk, Mr. Chance, the gardener, they're all missing. No, I mean, have you fired your gun tonight? Of course not. They wouldn't just kill outsiders like that. It would bring too much attention. But you should keep your eyes open. So you haven't seen anything strange been anywhere else? What are you trying to tell me, Emily? Are you in some kind of danger? Let me drive you back to New Orleans. I think I have enough. You know, at least get the police to take a look at this case. No, I'm fine. Thank you, Detective. I'll find your uncle, Miss Harwood. Just stay out of trouble. If we can just get rid of Jeremy, everything will go back to normal. That reminds me. I saw Miss Emily earlier. You remember her? You know she's Jeremy's niece. She's looking for me. That's right. She's helping us. In her own way. As long as she don't stand in the way of the mother of a thousand young. <laughs> I don't think she knows or cares about that. She just here for Jeremy. I'll be more worried about that Detective Combat fella. He been snooping around asking all kinds of questions. God, it hurts. I wish you would stop doing that. Gives me the heebie-jeebies.
Hey, little lady, how's your evening been going? Ups and downs, I suppose. <laughs> I hear that. We all live in the life of an elevator operator. Are you all right, sweetie? Do you want to see my mask, miss? I'm making it for St. John's. Uh, how did you... Is that supposed to be my... Ow! You should learn your place, little girl. Why are you acting this way? What did I ever do to you? Grace! Grace! Here we are, Dr. Gray's office. Now let's see if we can find some answers. Dearest Dr. Manzetti, I find myself in a losing battle with my patient. As I've disclosed in my previous letter, his delusions have him completely captured. It's bad enough that he is torturing himself with paranoia, but his madness turns out to be quite persuasive to others. Hypothetical psychosurgery based on the ideas by Burkhart and the St. Petersburg research could end up saving Jeremy's mind. I guess I never got a chance to look around this place. run aground, crashed right into the bayou. If I get the motor running, I could try backing into the river. supposed to die. What does that mean to you? That you were supposed to die? I'm the catalyst. I had to die to make the story happen. What story? What are you referring to, Jeremy? Thirty years ago, Frederick needed me to die. Jeremy! 
You're not making any sense. <laughs> Come back. Find your focus. Uncle? I cheated everyone. I didn't play my part. I escaped my doom. Destiny! Again, find your focus. Jeremy! Oh, everything is wrong. <laughs> Nothing is in place. Hey, listen to me. We're gonna drown. Calm down, Miss Hartwood. You're not in any danger. <sighs> but... Jeremy... He was here, wasn't he? Miss Hartwood, I am beginning to suspect your family curse is catching up with you. Have you ever talked to a doctor about your condition? No. No, I, I was just confused. I thought I saw him for a moment. I'm fine. I'll let you be. Miss, I want you to know I'm here to help, if you need me. This... this is my room. I belong here. Darling, I finally found that photograph from my time in France during the war. I don't expect this to be your fiancé, but it did make me think of him. Please feel free to use my camera if Is this how you travel, Ruth? The war in Europe rages on, and America is doing its part to hold back the German aggression. Ships from Boston and New Orleans arrived yesterday to bolster our gallant forces in France. I'll find you, John. That was that? God, I thought I was done with you. Expeditionary forces faced considerable John? losses in France. A brave men fallen on these in John. Fields, forever be oh, John. not of just Europe, but the world. What's the matter? Emma? President Woodrow Wilson spoke to us. I can't do this. Asking them to stand tall. What's the matter? I can't take you dying again. Speak of them proudly. And remember I'm them still all. hurting. What's the matter, Emily? But the war effort in Europe is not our Your death was just so... Death numbers on the home front are on the rise. Due to <laughs> influenza known as the Spanish flu. 
the New Orleans City Council decided to open yet another emergency hospital, the old Derseto Plantation. Two seventeen. Oh, John. I didn't know this is where you would end up. I didn't want to know. I stopped visiting you because I couldn't stand the indignity of your awful illness. I was ashamed of you. Ashamed of myself. Forgive me. Please, John. Let me go. <laughs> Are we done here? Is this what you wanted? John Marcus died at Deseto of the Spanish flu. Emily stopped visiting him because she didn't want to see him waste away. She adopted a lie because it felt better. Emily hated the pathetic man that passed away in Deseto, but she was very proud of the man she made up, a man who died a martyr in the trenches of France. This must have been the true trauma that the dog man specified in the contract, but why was it Emily's and not Jeremy's? Miss Hartwood. Lock the door, will you? I'd rather not run into dear Dr. Gray if I can help it. This feels strange. So very strange. There's a book missing. A secret door? Looks like it. Careful. Let me go first. Now we're talking. Great job, Emily. Found anything? Oh, Dr. Gray's in so deep, I knew it. He's as mad as his patients. I mean, look at this. She who can till the soil of this sick world and begin again. The black goat of the woods with a thousand young. Absolute insanity. Hello? Who's there? Jeremy? Jeremy is with the dark man. You can't save him. Jeremy is with the dark man? Where? Who is he? What, what is the dark man? The Hotwood Curse. He will come for you too.
You heard the telephone ring, right? No, the telephone's cut off. I tried calling the police earlier. Yeah, that's what I figured. Hey, Mr. Carnby? What? Nothing, right? That's a closet. That's right, detective. I'll see you later. I have to finish this. You're going inside the closet? I know what it looks like, but I can't explain it, much less justify it. All right. You do what you have to do, miss. Goodbye, detective. after me you're in my head now in that case I hope you enjoy your stay Emily stop don't worry we got you Almost painted the foyer with your own blood and guts. 
<laughs> Good to see you still in one piece. Stick around, will you? It's going to be an exciting. Good to see you made it, miss. And all that ruckus, a lot of give you a healthy dose of that sleeping juice. Wasn't sure you'd be waking up again. What happened? You had a psychological breakdown. Tried to shoot yourself. Sorry for the manhandling, but we just wanted to save you. You also stabbed Jeremy in the eye. Is he all right? Mm, he's a little strange, but everything else is back to normal. Really? I broke the pact? I don't know what you did, but it worked. Let's see you standing up, miss. Jeremy, are you okay? I'm so sorry for hurting you. How can you ever forgive me? Emily! I missed you so! I do hope you'll stay with me for a while. Uncle, what's wrong? Is it anesthesia? He, he seems so meek. I wish that was the case. It turns out that you managed to lobotomize him. It's actually quite impressive, considering your technique. This is permanent? You sacrificed a piece of his mind to save the whole. It's a little like treating a bad knee by cutting off the leg. It's blunt, but it works. That's terrible! Perhaps. But at least he won't suffer anymore. Do you remember the Dark Man, Jeremy? Ah, yes. Where did he go? I hope he is doing all right. You see? With a violent stab, you made any future treatment quite redundant. I assume you will be bringing him with you back to New Orleans. I will. I just need to find Detective Carnby. Everyone knows what to do? Y'all know the new words. Mrs. Thompson, we talked about this. I'm not sure everyone is comfortable. Doctor, I insist. This is important. We've waited for so long, Doctor. Let's just go with the old song. Not every change is an improvement. Boss, good or bad, we need to move forward. All in, Doc. Let's bet it all. But we don't know what we're dealing with. It'll be okay, Doctor. Better even. Oh, there are praises in abundance to the black goat of the woods. Hear us, brother. Take pity on us. Take pity on us. Ever, what are you doing? This is madness! This heals what he's doing. She's just a child! Edward! Get out, Emily! We're leaving! This is no! There has to be a number one! We're
Emily, are you all right? I don't understand anything that just happened. What was that? The whole gang was a cult dedicated to something called the Black Goat of the Woods. I've been trying to gather as much information as I could. It was only after you started talking about monsters that I thought maybe there was some truth to all the nonsense I was finding. Where's Jeremy? Uncle, are you all right? Everything is out of order. This isn't the way the story goes. I shouldn't be alive. Don't say that. You made it out. Be happy. Okay? Hey, kid. You doing all right? It wasn't what I expected. But you can't always get what you want. Ready to head back to New Orleans? Come on, Jeremy. Let's go. Can I come? Don't leave her. You have to take her to Hell's Kitchen. What on earth are you talking about? 